Thank you, sir. Senator Risch. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Comey, thank you for your service. Uh, America needs more like you, and we really appreciate it. Yesterday, uh, I got, and everybody got, the seven pages of your direct testimony that's now a part of the record here. And the first, I read it, then I read it again, and all I could think was, number one, how much I hated the class of legal writing when I was in law school. And you were the guy that probably got the A after, uh, after reading this. So uh, I, I find it clear. I find it concise. Uh, and uh, having been a prosecutor for a number of years and handling hundreds, maybe thousands of cases and read police reports, investigative reports, uh, this is as good as it gets. And, uh, and I really appreciate that. Not only, not only the conciseness and the clearness of it, but also the fact that you have uh, things that were written down contemporaneously when they happened, and you actually put them in quotes so we know exactly what happened, and we're, and we're not getting some uh, uh, rendition of it that, uh, that's in your mind. So, Thank you, so you're, you're to be complimented. For I had that. great parents that's, and great teachers who beat that into me. That, that's yeah. obvious, sir. Um, the, the chairman walked you through a number of things that the, the American people need to know and want to know. Number one, obviously we all know about the active measures that the Russians have taken. Uh, I think a lot of people were surprised at this. Those of us that work in the intelligence community, didn't, it didn't come as a surprise, but now the American people know this and it's good they know this because this is serious and it's a problem. I, I think secondly, um, I gather from all this that you're willing to say now that while you were director, the President of the United States w was not under investigation. Is that a fair statement? That's correct. All right. So that's a fact that we can rely on at this Yes, point. sir. Okay. On, uh, I remember uh, you, you talked with us shortly after February 14th when the New York Times wrote an article that suggested that the uh, Trump campaign was colluding with the Russians. You remember reading that article when it first came out? I do. It was about... Uh allegedly extensive electronic surveillance that Correct. communications. Yes, and and uh, that upset you to the point where you actually went out and surveyed the intelligence community to see whether, whether you were missing something in that. Is that correct? That's correct. I want to be careful in open setting. I, I'm, but I, I'm not yeah. going to go any further than that. Okay. With it, so thank you. Um, in addition to that, after that, you sought out both Republican and Democrat senators uh, to tell them that, hey, I don't know where this is coming from. But this is not the case. The, the, this is not factual. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. So, so again, so the American people can understand this, that report by the New York Times was not true. Is that a fair statement? Yeah, in the main, it was not true. We, and again, all of you know this, but maybe the American people don't. Uh, the challenge, and I'm not picking on reporters, about writing stories about classified information is the people talking about it often don't really know what's going on, and those of us who actually know what's going on are not talking about it. And we don't call the press to say, hey, you got that thing wrong about this sensitive topic. We just have to leave it there. I mentioned to the chairman the nonsense around what influenced me to make the July 5th statement. Nonsense, but I can't go explaining how it's nonsense. Thank you. Uh, all right, so, so those three things we now know uh, regarding the active measures with the presence under investigation and the collusion between the... Uh, the Russian, uh, the Trump campaign and the Russians. I, I want to uh, drill right down as my time is limited uh, to the most recent dust up uh, regarding uh, allegations that the President of the United States uh, uh, obstructed justice. And boy, you nailed this down on page five, paragraph three. You put this in quotes, words matter. You wrote down the words so we can all have the words in front of us now. There's 28 words there that are in quotes and it says, quote, I hope this is the president speaking. I hope you can see your way clear to letting this go, to letting Flynn go. He is a good guy. I hope you can let this go. Now, those are his exact words. Is that correct? Correct. And you wrote them here and you put them in quotes? Correct. Okay. Um, thank you for that. He did not direct you to let it go. Not in his words, no. He did not order you to let it go. Again, those words are not in order. No. He said, I hope. Now, like me, you probably did hundreds of cases, maybe thousands of cases, charging people with criminal offenses. And of course, you have knowledge of the thousands of cases out there that, uh, where people have been charged. Do you know of any case where a person has been charged for obstruction of justice, or for that matter, any other criminal offense, where this, they said or thought they hoped for an outcome? 
I don't know well enough to answer. And the reason I keep saying his words is I took it as a direction. Right. I mean, this is the President of the United States with me alone saying I hope this. I took it as this is what he wants you, me to do. Now, you, I, didn't, I didn't obey that, but that's the way I took it. You may have taken it as a direction, but that's not what he said. Correct. I, that's he what said, I said. He said I hope. Those are exact words, okay. correct. You, you don't know of anyone that's ever been charged for hoping something. Is that a fair statement? I don't as I sit here. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Feinstein. 